Matt from Front to Truck here. In today's video, we're gonna do a complete overview of the 2021 Model 3. So I took delivery about a month ago and check out my one month review of the Model 3. But in today's video specifically, I've driven around 3,700 miles. I'm gonna tell you some key things, some big takeaways if you're considering buying a Tesla or you're thinking about taking delivery soon, some things you wanna know. So if you are thinking about getting a Tesla Model 3, here are some features that you really need to think about. These are brand new features of the refreshed model in 2021. Now, if you are thinking about a Model 3 and you know that you want one, you better order it because right now for the base package, which is under $40,000, the cheapest model of all Teslas, the delivery is now January, 2022. But some changes. The center console in this refreshed Model 3 is completely different now. So before it was a glossy piano black finish and a lot of customers have found that there's fingerprints and they didn't really like the finish being glossy so now it is more of a matte gray type of finish with a really cool uh, close and opening function of the center console there is a chrome delete so no more handles on the new refreshed Teslas for 2021 have chrome handles. So if you see a Tesla with chrome handles, that is a model from before 2021. So now the Model 3 has Tesla Vision. So there's no more radar on the new Tesla. So this is not a bad thing. So Elon Musk has really put a lot of emphasis on Tesla Vision, which are eight cameras that are used to use autopilot in your new Tesla. Now, we're gonna go over autopilot and a lot of other functions later in the video, so stick around to the end, but the autopilot now uses Tesla Vision. So one of the coolest and most used functions of the standard range that I use is the automatic close on your trunk. So now with one button or from your phone, you can automatically close your trunk. It has a power lift. So the older models, you had to physically close it. One of the most convenient options, if you're someone that has a lot of kids, and maybe you have a lot of things going into your trunk, like groceries or toys or what have you, really cool function. You now have four USB-C ports. So if you have a new iPhone or some new technology that you need to charge, you now have four USB-C ports. You're now getting more space in the Model 3. Your frunk, which is your front trunk, now has more space because of a new and upgraded heat pump so you now have a larger amount of room in that frunk, another benefit of the refreshed Model 3. So in addition to my overall thoughts, again, this is an overall video of the Model 3. What are some things that you need to think about? Is it worth it? Is the Model 3 worth it based on the performance, based on what you get just straight out of the box, if you will? So the standard range plus, which is the model that I have, has a zero to 60 of 5.3. Is that enough? If you like performance, trust me, if you had an old ICE vehicle, I had a Jeep Compass that had an absolutely dreadful zero to 60, you will be blown away at the quickness of this car, even being the base model, the standard range plus. The range isn't enough. Out of the box, you get 263 miles. Now, I have a full charging video on cost and what to expect based on your commute. This is gonna help you choose which model to get. So please check out the charging video, uh, maybe after this one. But this is the cheapest model of all the Teslas, so if cost is an issue, I would consider the standard range plus. Um, but if you're looking for a really good, quick, high-tech sedan, there's actually more space because of those refreshes in this sedan, it is a sedan that is, than any other car I've ever seen. There's that frunk space and space under the trunk. So after driving for around 3,700 miles in my Model 3, my overall impressions are that it was worth every single penny. But we're gonna go over some warning signs later in the video, but overall, and we're gonna explain those warning signs by the way, but overall, for the performance and the space and all the quality of the finishes, I was overall very pleased. So if you're thinking about, should I get a Model 3, the performance, the quality, the range, I think for most daily drivers is really gonna blow you away. So what might be some of those warning signs when we're talking about the Model 3? Well, you've probably heard of paint quality issues and after 3,700 miles, 
I can just say this, I've driven uh, fairly frequently around town on the highway and I already have some issues. Now, I wouldn't say these are deal breakers to me. I don't want the paint quality issue to scare you away from buying a Tesla. I mean, honestly, any car that doesn't have a front air intake, there's no uh, grill on your Tesla, correct? So all of the rocks and gravel and insects, your front bumper is honestly getting pummeled by that stuff every single day. I would highly recommend some type of ceramic coating or PPF, which is paint protection film, because I mentioned paint quality issues. I already have some dings or some small chips. And if you're putting down $40,000, you kind of wish you didn't have this after 3,700 miles of driving, but it is what it is. So another warning sign when it comes to charging. Now, one of the biggest complaints that you hear about EVs and Tesla specifically is how long it takes to charge but most EV owners and Tesla owners charge overnight. So I know you're probably gonna hear, well, it takes hours to charge and this, that, and the other, but what else are you doing overnight other than sleeping? So if you can install a NEMA charger, again, for the cost on these chargers and all kinds of adapters and things like that, check out that charging video but it's really convenient to wake up to a full um, charge every single day. You're really not worried about your range and the charging is not a hindrance because you're sleeping anyway. Now, of course, if you need charge right now, you have to go to a supercharger. So if you're low in an emergency or what have you, you are reliant on those superchargers. It's the only thing to charge your Tesla at 300 plus miles an hour. Uh, so you do have to live or find one of those superchargers if you need something in a pinch. So another warning sign, is the range enough? Um, so I'm just gonna say that my daily commute is around 36 miles and I charge every two to two and a half days. And that is enough for me, but keep in mind this. I only let my car get down to around 140 miles and then I charge it. And that is because well, it's really to prevent battery degradation. So when you let your car get all the way down to zero or very low, the conversation has been, you're gonna lose some overall mileage if you take your car and battery that low and then charge it. It's to prevent that from happening, preventing that battery degradation. But even if you have a longer commute, honestly, if you don't mind charging a little more frequently, I think the standard range Model 3 is plenty of miles for most people. Now, obviously, if you're planning on taking this on a road trip, you're gonna have to make a fair amount of stops, which is definitely going to add to your overall time getting to your destination. But even if you have a longer commute of, let's say, 100 miles, you can still buy a standard range plus, but you're gonna have to charge it probably every day. So just something to think about. I would um, just write out how many miles you use on an average daily basis, and then think, well, are 250 to 230 miles going to be enough? And I say that number because you're typically gonna charge to your daily full charge. Now the car estimates around 260, but that is only the charge you use for road trips. Tesla recommends only charging to your daily charge, which is around 230 to maybe 250 miles. So another warning versus reality is the cost of ownership. Now the standard range Model 3 is the average price of a new car in 2021, that's $40,000. But while there's some upfront costs like the down payment of $4,500, the reservation fee, which is now 250, overall the cost of owning the car is drastically low. The maintenance cost is very low as there's less parts for wear and tear, there's no oil changes, and I'll tell you this, the monthly cost to charge my Tesla, now again, I take it down to around 140 miles and charge every two and a half days, is right around $60. So if you think about a standard 12 or 13 gallon tank, I forget what it is for an ICE vehicle, uh, the average cost to fill up your tank is gonna be around $35 to $45. Well, the monthly cost to charge my Tesla, again, is around 60. So the reality is the overall cost for the lifespan of your Tesla, especially if you plan on having it for years, it's very, very beneficial. So of course a Tesla's most popular function and one of the most talked about functions is the autopilot. So I am currently using autopilot, keeping my eyes on the road, keeping one hand on the wheel uh, per Tesla's instructions. 
Um, but essentially, I wanna let you know that the autopilot is absolutely amazing. If you have a rush hour commute, even if you're going long distances, this really takes a lot of the work away from you and it's a lot less stressful. But the thing I will say is this. So the one thing about autopilot is it's not full self-driving. So to change lanes, uh, if you do not have full self-driving, you have to disable autopilot by tapping the brake, turning the steering wheel, or hitting the toggle on the steering wheel up. So to make those adjustments in traffic, like lane change, you have to do it manually. But the autopilot feature, even the standard autopilot that comes with your Tesla, is absolutely worth every penny. It takes so much stress away from all of that traffic, from just going on the highway for long distances. I'm telling you, if you're thinking about buying a Tesla and you're remotely interested in autopilot, you'll be blown away. So the screen takes, I would say, about a week to get used to, and is the car too different? You might be asking yourself, well, is there gonna be a learning curve? Am I gonna like the minimalistic look or using a screen to access all my technology? Well, you will absolutely get used to it very quickly, and if you do like anything modern or maybe you're a fan of technology, you're gonna really love this car. You're gonna fall in love, and the tablet or the screen, I should say, is really easy to use. And we'll have future videos of how to use the screen. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. But overall, if you love technology, this car is loaded with it. So my overview of the Model 3, if you are considering a Tesla Model 3 or another model of Tesla, consider using my referral link in the description and check out the accessories all the accessories at one click that you really should consider if you're getting a brand new Tesla. You gotta keep that Tesla in really good condition and keep it clean. So if you do like this content, make sure to drop a like so that I know that you enjoyed it and consider subscribing. Again, this is Matt from Front to Trunk. Put all your questions in the comments below so I can answer them and we will see you in the next video.